Congratulations, your call with me is confirmed. I'm very excited to be able to talk to you very soon. Um, I just want to let you know that if you opted for email or text reminders, you're going to be receiving some of those. Um, so I can't wait to talk to you. Um, just want to share a little bit about me, my life, and how I got to be here today. Um, but before I get into that, I want to let you know that it's really important that you show up for this call. Uh, part of being successful is just to first show up. So um, after our call, you will be receiving um, the 10 foods to avoid if you have autoimmune condition guide. Um, so I'm excited that you're here. So thank you for being here. Um, first, I want to you know talk a little bit about who I am and how I got here. So I'm actually a registered member of the Cherokee tribe. So I'm very... Um, proud of my heritage. Um, <clears throat> I'm a mother of seven children, and I know to a lot of people that's kind of shocking, um, but I birthed all of them. Um, I'm one of those crazy weird women that actually always wanted a big family, and so I enjoyed being pregnant. I enjoyed the childbirth. I enjoyed all of that, and I had a really easy time with it. So. I had my first child when I was 18. I got pregnant uh, with my last two kids when I was 40 and 42. I got pregnant naturally um, without the assistance of anything. My first three kids were born in the hospital. My last four kids were born at home and two of them we did unassisted without a midwife. So I just, I really liked that. Um, Let's see, when I, when I was having my, when I was pregnant with my daughter at 18, um, I started attending a breastfeeding support group because I wanted to prepare myself for, you know, for being a mother. And um, in this breastfeeding support group, I was introduced to um, herbs and natural healing. And um, they had a lending library, so I was able to check out some books there and stuff. That was the time back before the computers, right? So anyway, my family, we grew up and we always um, foraged for uh, huckleberries and mushrooms and, you know, those types of things. There's a lot of wild things out there that we foraged for. And we also hunted and fished and did that kind of thing. But I believe in my family, <clears throat> probably... Before my great-grandmother's generation, the whole herbal healing and going out and being able to recognize different medicinal herbs was lost and just not passed down, unfortunately, um, to the generations right before me, you know, back sometime in uh, the early 1900s at some point. I think going to the doctor became a lot more popular and getting on medications. So, but I... I was born different and I didn't want that, you know. I, I respect the Cherokee people because they lived in a lot more um, natural state, more close with mother nature and they knew how to identify um, herbal healing in, uh, in and around them. And so over the years, I've learned how to do that same thing. I've learned how to go out in my area identify lots of different um, medicinal herbs and make tinctures and um, glycerites and balms and salves and all kinds of stuff. And so most of that we use for our own healing. And um, I absolutely love it. I don't think that there's any better than going back to the original start, you know, with um, herbs and natural healing and foods and things like that. So anyway, <clears throat> when, when I had my daughter, I was only 18, the doctors talked me into vaccinating her and I told them I feel really, really terrible about this. I don't have a good feeling at all. And back then I didn't really, I, I wasn't really um, listening to my intuition because I believe that we all have that, but I wasn't listening to myself. And so I allowed her to be vaccinated and she ran high fevers and screamed for days. And so at three and a half, she was diagnosed with autism. 
at 11, she started having seizures and that drastically changed my life. So um, when I was pregnant with my son, my first son back in 1990, I actually bought my first house because I wanted to provide that stability for my kids. I didn't want to live in an apartment building or something like that. And so I bought my first house. Um, after we had our, um, let's see, our fourth and fifth sons, I started investing in real estate and I was successful doing that. And so um, I became a trainer and mentor for other companies and spoke at seminars. And I absolutely loved doing that. Um, but the last seminar I did was for one of Donald Trump's companies. I believe it was in San Francisco. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, I homeschooled my kids for a great number of years. So I, I have a heart in teaching and I, I really enjoy it, whether it's small people or big people or anybody. I, I love teaching. And so, um, but I started thinking about the fact that I wanted to be able to be more self-sufficient and, you know, grow and raise more of our foods. And so we purchased just under 10 acre property in a really small town in Idaho. The population's like 360, which is perfect for me because I like the seclusion away from people a little bit more in the quiet. So we started raising animals for our family, livestock, and things that we could do to provide food and other things for our family. So we have sheep and goats, and so I started milking goats, making you know cheese and yogurt and stuff with the goat milk, and also learning how to make our own soap. And now I make my own laundry laundry detergent. Um, and then with our sheep, I learned how to to spin their wool and make yarn. So for Christmas presents, I'll make my kids you know, scar, uh, knit them some scarves and hats and things like that. Because to me, there's nothing better than a homemade gift. And that is truly a labor of love. But anyway, I like the self-sufficient lifestyle. I like living more simply. I like being able to provide our family with um, organic, non-GMO grown vegetables and fruits and, you know, meat and things and not having to run to the store for everything we need and then not knowing what's in the food we're eating. So those things are really important to me. So um, I like teaching a lot of this to other people too, because I believe in today's society, it's like everything is chemical laden. Everything is so processed and we've gotten so far away from you know, more natural things. And so that's that's what my passion is in, in helping other people. And throughout my life, I've had a lot of people, you know, in the family that got cancer, had diabetes, had autoimmune conditions, had all these other ailments and sicknesses. And I don't really necessarily call them diseases because I think that there's usually some kind of cause. And so, but my... My heart is always in helping other people to be able to overcome some of the challenges that they have and the ailments and the sickness and all, and all of that stuff. And I myself have um, not had a lot of problems in my life. I did take a birth control shot um, after I had my fifth child because both of those boys were 10 and a quarter pounds. And so I was my first 10 and a quarter, 10 and a quarter pound boy broke my tailbone. He got stuck. We were having home birth. He got stuck coming out, broke my tailbone. And uh, that was pretty painful. And then 13 months later, I had another 10, point, 10 and a quarter pound baby. And so I made a really bad choice back then to go and get a, a Depo-Provera birth control shot because I thought, well, what if, what if I have another one and what if it's bigger this time? You know, what if it's like 12 pounds? Am I gonna be able to get it out? You know, so I made a bad choice out of fear. And I suffered greatly for it. And so for about two years, I felt like I was having strokes every day. And there was tingling in my head, tingling in my limbs, um, dizziness, um, nausea, uh, not remembering how to write a check at the grocery store. It was just a lot of really weird symptoms. I went and saw some people. They said, oh, you might have brain cancer. You might have a tumor. You might have MS. You know, who knows what's going on? Uh, I went to a neurologist. He said, oh, you can take this migraine medicine because that's what it is. And so it didn't work. Then he wanted to put me on seizure medicine and take out my spinal fluid. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. 
So I knew I needed to detoxify and get this stuff out of my body. So I went through this raw detoxification diet for like eight months. I did nothing but raw juice for 21 days. I did colon cleansing because I knew and I started listening to myself at that time, you know, listening to my body and listening to my intuition. And I knew I needed to get it out and I knew it had to be drastic because I felt horrible. And so that's what I did. My symptoms started to go away and now I'm free from feeling like I did back then. It did work, um, but that's what I needed to do. And so, you know, but I'm, I'm a pretty strong person when it comes to, you know, doing the things that I need to do and, um, you know, raising our own food and doing those types of things. You know, I like the self-sufficiency. I like more natural. And so I've had a lot of people in my life that have had a lot of different ailments and I just, I have a passion in helping and teaching people. And so that's kind of what led me to where I'm at right now. And so um, I've done a lot of natural protocols to help my daughter get over some of her seizures. And she went from having like 33 seizures a day to having like one or two a week. So I know that there's natural healing and um, I just, I want to share what, what I've learned with other people and help them to uh, feel better too. So I'm super excited to be able to talk to you soon. Um, please show up for the call. It's really important. And um, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to you. Until we get to talk, I hope that you're very blessed. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks.